what are we gonna start with here? So, Tom, can you hear us okay over here? Yes, I can, thank you. Excellent. So we have just a small list of items to go over, which is a follow-up from the last week's meeting and things that we kind of left off on, just to see if you guys are on the same page um, and Mich Michelle has updated information for you. Um, the first thing that we, we want to talk about is the ARPA funds. We know that tonight at the Selectman's meeting we're going to start setting some public hearing, some public hearings so that the, the public can learn about the ARPA funds and learn what we can and can't do with them. So as I understand it, what I've gotten from you guys is that we're not looking to spend a whole lot of that, that, that this year until we get more input and maybe look at some of our bigger projects. So for this year from ARPA, we have the two pieces of equipment, Michelle, from the fire department, mm -hmm. which totaled 44000 We are estimating up to 10000 for the water s filtration system. Anyways. I do have two different companies coming in this week. Um, and hope to have some some quotes and bids and ideas for you soon. They asked that we do an up-to-date water test first, so we're dropping that off tomorrow. So hopefully we'll have some soon. But we put 10,000 as a place figure in there. And then the other thing that you guys had talked about last week were the bonuses. Um, and Michelle is going to walk you through um, one of these <coughs> spreadsheets of the numbers she came up with and get your thoughts on that. So I have um, spent some time on this looking at uh, a two-year period because that's measurable at this point. We had locked down in March of 2020. Uh, we're at March of 22 now. We're still in pandemic mode. Uh, so I took employees that have been employed since 2020 and working <coughs> currently um, and then I took employees that were hired from March of 21 and are still working currently um, so if we have all employees working since March of 21 I have um, come up with some uh, guidelines to what their bonus would be. Um, the first uh, first suggestion would be 2,000 plus hours at $2,000, 1,000 to 1,999 at $1,000, 25 hours to 990 hours, $500, and then your uh, workers, like your stipend people that don't necessarily work a certain amount of hours or election workers who um, you know only work a couple times a year at a stipend of two hundred and fifty dollars um, so on this worksheet I have three different numbers so the first the top number would be so everybody working since 20, 2021 um, the second number is everybody who's been working since 2020 and then the third number is everybody who's been working since 2020 and excluding your stipend and your election workers. Oh, because they don't have to give it to the stipend and election workers, is that what you're saying? <coughs> they don't have to give it to anybody. Uh, no, I know. Doesn't it seem like these numbers would be reversed that since they were work, since we had more people, since no, March of 2020 is further back, that that would be a higher number than March of 21? That was confusing me a little no. bit. It's weird that. Uh, because we, we have more in we have more employees Since that are then. still current. Oh. Because Since. people that were working before um, might have left. Yeah. Um, Tom, I took a screenshot of just that page so if you can see it. So, and you don't have to make any decisions here. This is unless you want to give her some direction for the warrant, but this is really just a informational so we know which direction you want to go in. Um, She's got the number of employees it affects too, based on the hours down there. You can see that. Um, I can look on with, with Michelle's. Do you have any thoughts on this, Tom? You know, I, I, uh, you know, from my perspective, the pandemic started around March of 2020, as I recall. Um, so clearly, anybody who's still employed. Um, 
that was here then, I think ought to be entitled to it. Having said that, I think people that, if I understand the schedule right, people that have started later than that, since March of 2021, they've also worked through the pandemic. So um, I, I think there's, there's merit um, in taking both of those groups. I, um, I think that's consistent with the way the schedule's been developed. Is that right, Michelle? She didn't quite understand what you meant, Tom. Can you explain yeah, it? Yeah, I'm not sure I did either. I, okay. I guess what I'm saying is if, we, if somebody at least was here as of March of 21, then I think they should be entitled to the, to the bonus. That's, that's what I think. Yeah. Yeah, that was kind of my thinking. And there are, there are about six people that fall in that 2021 um, yeah. Set there. Now, now with regard to the amounts, are those dollar, you know, five hundred, a thousand, two thousand? Are those gross or net amounts, uh, Michelle? Um, as we discussed last week, you wanted me to, you wanted me to um, include taxes and everything so that they Crash take ahead on I ninety five and in a quarter mile. You're still on the fastest route. Sorry about that, folks. Um, <laughs> Uh, so they, so that's going to be their take home, that, Tom, based yeah. on what you said so last is week. So it, is that $2,000 amount, is that actually like... Take home. Take home, uh, yeah. It, so that would be their net their net check. Uh, I see. So okay. this number up here then, say if we use the um, March of 2021, that would include all the taxes and stuff. Is that how that works? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So it wouldn't be more. Yeah. Okay, so if you yeah. tried to divide it up, it wouldn't work. Right, exactly. Yeah. Okay. So were you guys and, all? And, and, and how much is that amount in total? Was that like seventy thousand? Seventy-two. Seventy-two. Yeah. Um, I I I'm kind of looking at the the March of 2020. I mean, if anybody left us, I mean that's. Well, I mean, it, the the March of 20 it wouldn't. But we've had people that came in in March of 2021. Yeah. When 20. 20 cover them or no? No, because they didn't work no. in March of 2020. Okay, I understand. Yeah, right. okay. Because so so, I was is, thinking so it would cover anybody from that point on. Yeah, your 2021 yeah. hires consist of that $9,351. Yeah. yeah. Your, your specifically, they worked in 2020 is your $63,175. Oh, Those see, combined yeah. gives you everybody that's working currently. Of course, yeah. that number can only go down because people can choose between now and um, July 1st. So. so that would put the total expenditures of the ARPA for this year proposed at um, about 127,000 rounding up. You're using which number here, the 75? So I'm using the 72 that Michelle the has, the 44 for the fire department, no. and approximately 10,000, which we know will have a tighter number on the water coming up. Okay. Yeah, I think your number on the water is low. Really? Because no, when no, I talked to, I, no, um, I do. like, Goodrich, I talked to a couple of them, they thought that number was going to be I, high. I had a friend of mine that just did a remote re reverse osmosis on one of his houses, and he had quotes between fifteen dollars and $20,000 to do a reverse osmosis. Well, one that, of them was 30000 Right. So, so I'll try to get the prices in soon, but Michelle will confirm that Poland Springs is picking up our bottles. They're taking them all out. April 1st. Okay. So, I'm gonna so start is this is that system for the fire department or for town hall? Oh, town, town hall. We can't drink the water. They can't. Here. We town can't drink hall. the water yes. here. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, uh, anything else uh, on the ARPA funds for now? Um, I, I guess we can pick it up a little later. I had some communication going back with Michelle, but as I understand it, the ARPA funds can also be used to address some of our bridge and road work. Yes. So that's just something to consider when we get later talking about the capital um, improvement line uh, reserves, right. uh, you know, undesignated fund balance. And I, I, we don't need to do anything like that. I mean, that 
So that ARPA fund's already in its own little yeah, kitty anyway, so we wouldn't want to yeah. put that in a reserve, including into we our can't capital. can't put it in a reserve. No. So no, 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 that's myself, not what I'm suggesting. I'm, no, he, I'm, that, I'm, okay. I'm really against, I, I think we ought to really take a look at a big picture here. We take this money and, I mean, we're, we're putting a boatload of money into roads now. We have a boatload of money to put forward for future projects. And I think this might be a time there that, um, you know, maybe we can look outside the, uh, the scope a little bit. Maybe think of maybe um, um, a wreck, uh, something to do with the wreck, something to do with um, you know, yeah. fire station. Yeah. It, there's other departments other than the roads. And, you know. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and, uh, I, I think, just for clarity, I think what Tom was saying was that if, let's just say you came up with something else that you wanted to spend some of this capital improvement on, he, because we've all, let's, you know, from conversations, it sounds like everybody's talking about putting some money in the West Shore Drive culvert fund, let's just yeah. say. Yeah. So what Tom is saying is that if you, if we, instead of taking out a capital improvements, if you wanted to use that money for something else, he could, you could use ARPA funds for those, for that bridge and stuff as well, just to kind of remember that as you start me, talking about your... Let me, let me add to that. My, my experience has always been that when you have an opportunity to use restricted monies, which are really ARPA funds, mm -hmm. and what I'll call unrestricted money, which are your undesignated reserve balances, always use your restricted first and keep your unrestricted because you have more flexibility with it. So if we can legitimately use the ARPA funds for some of these capital projects, I would do that and, and not use our undesignated fund balance reserves. What was the exact number we got? Uh, 230? Two, yeah, I, okay. I don't fine. have that folder with me tonight. So we've got to set some public hearings anyways because we've got to get input based on the, yeah. how it's written. So And so um, the final rule, I think I've talked about this before, the final rule from the Treasury basically gave us a $10 million allowance on lost revenue. Uh, we didn't lose any revenue, but they're giving us that standard deduction to everybody because they found that the smaller communities couldn't find things that fell within their guidelines to use their money for. I see. Uh, and so under uh, lost revenue, we could use this money for just about, just about any regular government service that we would normally uh -huh. Conduct. Oh, okay. So yeah, this money's it's pretty broad range now. That goes into effect April first. Um, yeah. People who had used their money before now they didn't have that wide range of possibilities. So what it tells me is the the government gave everybody a bunch of money they didn't need. Yeah. Because they can't find a place to spend yes. it. Yeah. yeah. Which is fine. We'll find a place to spend it, but uh. Yeah. I think we ought to keep our options open and get some uh, ideas from the public, public maybe. Yeah. And um, I mean, we're, we're looking at right now putting almost 500000 aside right now for bridges and other road projects in the future. Um, you know, let's come up with some sort of, I know Shapley's building a building for their election hall or something like that. Ooh, I you know? a building? That's, I mean, and, that's one of their thoughts. Yeah, one of their thoughts. They haven't had public hearings. I know, they, I'm just yeah. throwing some ideas. Although, out. They can't, there can't be a worse town hall. For election for oh, voting no. in the chapel. It's not handicap accessible. I mean, well, they have a chairlift, but I mean, it's it, scary. I'm not handicapped, but I have an issue going up and down those stairs. It's scary. <laughs> if you have nothing to do some days. Talking so about going upstairs. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's terrible. Okay, let's move on because we are short on yeah. time here. Yeah. So, um, next. Can I ask a question? Of, I'm sorry, just a quick question. That public hearing is going to be, is that for ARPA funds only or is that for all capital? Just ARPA funds. Is, is there any reason why we wouldn't also solicit comments for more broadly other capital projects? Uh, because we're hoping that our warrant will be done by the time those public hearings come into place. Yeah. Uh, but I, I believe we're planning on putting money generally, or it's been suggested, we put money generally into a capital reserve that can be used and appropriated at a later date. I'm just saying if you're asking people about the, the community about projects, why not ask them about other projects as well, like the rec, some rec projects or whatever that may be, something in town. Hall. Well, Tom, I mean, we're, we're we're already we're already looking at projects for the rec, whatever the uh, the department had put forward. The ARPA funds yeah. is something that we'd be looking for in the very future. You know, not this year's budget, it'd be next year's budget. I mean, I guess you yeah. could, I guess you could, Tom, if what David is saying is, is as long as you didn't hold up this year's warrant. 
for that. There's no reason you couldn't get the no. input. But no. by the time I, I mean, our public hearing is going to be a good 14 days out. And we were scheduled to have this warrant to the Warren and Finance um, last week. Last week. Two weeks ago. So you know what I mean? we, are, we are in no rush to spend this money. We don't have to spend this money right. what two years. And chances are, Tom, you're going to have capital. You're going to have money in these accounts next year to spend I, down as well. I, I, I'm not suggesting that we rush for it. I'm just saying that if you're if you're bringing people together and they have an opportunity to talk about capital projects specifically for perhaps opera funds and knowing that we may have some funds available for capital in a future year why not get some feedback from people about more broadly what kind of capital projects the community might like to see okay. well i think that's a lot what the uh, capital improvement committee really would be doing right i would think so and also could they well not they all of us together have a um you know public meeting i know i know i'm not trying to stress you out but i'm saying down the road i you know what i mean like we could for for that specifically you know to talk about okay what do you see in our future and yeah we definitely the, the rec, capital the improvement committee center. is on the agenda the first week in april so i'm sure we're going to hear some thoughts yep so, okay. so we'll keep that in mind in our posting tom so do we want to do we want to plug the number of 75 uh, 72,525 the um the march of 2021 that's, that's what we want. We it's not a decision. Number. Is that the kind yeah. of the direction that, that for the warrant? Everybody. That covers everybody. That covers everybody. This yeah, is the number we, we can plug into our so-called yeah. warrant for okay. now. What do you Tom, think, you're Tom? good with that? Yes. Okay. Okay, so there we go. We All right, so we're going to move on to the rec because that's the next one that should be fairly simple. So the two pieces of conversation. So I, right now there's no real agreement, and we don't have to have the conversation now whether or not bathrooms need to be had at the rec next year and five years. We know that it's a conversation that, that needs, to, needs to happen with, with more input. But whether, in, just in case you decide to ever go that direction, I think the three of you are on the same page that let's set $1,000 aside for a septic design. Just so that if it happens, we'll know where it's gonna be and then we'll deal with it when the time comes. So everybody agrees with $1,000 for that. Yes. Then it's the parking lot issue. Now we started talking about the parking lot and Tom, we did go back and look at the original request that's in your budget book. The, the rec chair did ask for $40,000. Um, yeah. We do not have anything from the rec or the road commissioner that's um, planning on doing the work as far as a plan, a schedule, um, a sketch. It is just a number, you know, Will told me very honestly and I appreciate that, that she was asking him and asking him and asking him and he just gave her what he believed might be a good estimate um i know that that number has since increased to fifty thousand. um when i spoke to tom i'm not sure how why the number changed but tom's got fifty thousand. um so we need to decide if you want to do parking lot work this year uh, I would, uh from what i i'm sorry good was that you can't go ahead yeah, it is i was just you know i've been thinking about it and um I mean, I know we need to widen the parking lot. I, 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 you know, I know we need to get that bigger. I would hate to, and I know we need bathrooms, but in the future, near future, I really would like to, I mean, this is just my own community center, rec center. So do we spend money now to do a septic that we may have to rip out or? Well, that's or, why we're doing just the septic plan. We're not putting a, a septic okay, in, just, just the plan. plan. Okay, if All we right. did a plan, so my suggestion is if, they're going to go ahead, and I have no issue putting forward the 40000 for the parking lot. Mm -hmm. I would I like to have to some sort of idea of what we're getting for forty grand. Is it going to be 100 by 100, 20 by 50? Yeah. You know, yeah. some, how many cars is it going to be? You know, shooting from the hip, throwing numbers out there. You know, my world, it do, doesn't work, you know. Have you, and, and I know not to overstep toes or anything, but ha, did you have a chance? I mean, do you just looking at it, do you feel like we can expand that parking lot? Well, what, I'm, what I was getting ready to say, we, can ex, we can't expand the, the one up high. We got to do down low. Okay, and that's what my concern was last week was if we're going to put a septic system in there, then... You know, we have to know where the septic's going before they put the parking lot in, because they may have to work around that or over it. Can we do a stipulation that says we want to put this money forward for a parking lot, but before the parking lot gets put in, well, we would like a septic design to know where it's. That that's what I was just going to suggest is I'll I'll I have no issue putting the forty thousand forward as long as we know that before we okay the work after town meeting that there's a septic design to make sure that they don't end up putting the parking lot where the septic's going to go. Yeah, that's the, that's the reason for the design. 
Yeah. Right. So the article will actually be for forty-one thousand because we're doing forty thousand for the parking lot, a thousand for the septic. So we're striking the thirty-five thousand away for now. The bathroom. Yes, yes. For the bathroom. Until we can figure out. Right, and, and you had a valid point. If you end up, let's just say for conversation, you use the ARPA money to do a rec center where the old gym is. You know, maybe you're still going to need to widen that parking lot for baseball and soccer, yeah. but and maybe not a bathroom if you do something here. So. Even if it's you a did start. Yeah, right. All right. And the rec director is in there, right, Michelle? Everything else? That was the only rec thing we needed to go over. How much land is there? Oh, I can't remember how many. It's a lot of it's unusable because it's on the other side of the uh, swamp. How but. big it was. All right. All right. They were I'm supposed done. to have cut the trees up there, and they haven't done it. Now. They're, they're working on it this week. Is what this week? Been told. Oh, okay. Yep. All, right. All right. So 41000 for that. Um, Next, let's talk about the 500,000 for the capital, uh, the 500,000 from the undesignated fund that is going to be put in various reserve accounts as we understand it. Um, you guys had some different thoughts. Tom, do you want to start with yours? Yeah, sure. I just, I, 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 uh, I think that number is fine. As I understand it from Michelle, that that would that would bring our undesignated fund balance back to within policy levels. So I, I think if that's true, that number makes sense to put into the capital reserve. I just think we ought to have a list of capital projects that uh, we could describe to the community at town meeting as to what we in generally intend to use those monies for. Don't necessarily have to put numbers aside of each of these and and they are not anything that have been vetted fully enough to actually appropriate the money for those specific projects yet but they ought to understand what we what we think they will likely be used for and we bring that back to the to them for their vote at a future date so i think that one of the ones that i've heard from all of you um is that is the row bridge but that's so that, that's something that we want to so put. So we we got two projects already designated out of that five hundred. Well, With the, you, you guys have talked about it, right? Kim hasn't been a part of it. So the thought was, and Kim, the thought that they went in their last workshop was a hundred thousand for Row Bridge in a reserve account. We have seventy five thousand in the other. Correct. Okay. That brings that up to one hundred seventy five thousand. Well, are you calling this Row Bridge, or are you calling it in the Bridge and Culvert Fund? Because that's the no. difference. You know, I because I really think that they don't go together. It's too separate. well. They can go together, but nothing that's if you just put the money in the current account, correct, Michelle? It says bridge slash culvert, so, uh, bridge and culvert statutory reserve. That's what I thought. So it something could change, and you wouldn't necessarily have to spend it on row. Some of what I've gotten from Tom is that he's more interested in earmarking it specifically. <coughs> and I know that Row Bridge has been your baby that you've really wanted. Bridge, so. West Shore Drive, I mean, both of those need to be. Yeah. Right, so the, yeah. so the question is, do you want to put, do you want to create new accounts and label them, or are you comfortable just putting them in that account that you have? And Michelle, is there any extra work on your part doing them separately? Uh, it's just it's just another account. That's okay. yeah. I don't have a problem either way. Whatever. Okay. I, my my I suggestion was to make an account for Robridge. Uh -huh. Take the seventy five thousand. That's so. Take the account that we have, Bridge and Culvert. Combine that to the Robridge account. Can, we do that? Can you rename that account? Uh, it would have to be an article to. Yeah, well, it's going to be anyways, right? We well, no, you'd have to change it then. Repurpose so, that. Yeah. Do that. So, because I, I think, like Tom says, you know, we're going to start dictating which what money's going where. Really, the only way to do it, I mean, unless we leave, unless we leave that account the way it is, and you're just going to have For another a disaster one. or and something. So, my thought on that is possibly leaving it w w the way it is, and you could use that money. I mean, we have a design. We've had engineering, engineering done for Robridge, but we haven't yeah. had it. We haven't paid what? for it. Um, for other bridges, oh. I mean, and we have, you and you know, could other, use it in that account. So you, that could, account. you could use well, it. Well, if we were going to do that, that then account. if we were going to do that, which makes a lot of sense, use that for the engineering and whatever comes forward, which I think by the time we pay for the engineering over there, paying for the engineering over there, if it comes to that, um, we know $75,000, it probably should be more than enough, I hope, but, um, but do the you, numbers that I, that I suggested the hundred thousand for row and the two hundred for the uh, 
um, West Shore Drive. Drive, you know, maybe we split that down the middle and say 150, 150 to, you know, to make that even. If we're not going to combine, because I was looking at, we already have 75,000, add another 100, that's 175, 200 for the other. Uh, Jesus. Oh my God. Sorry. Is everything okay, John? <laughs> Kathy just went live on the TV station. <laughs> I didn't know we're, we're all excited about those numbers we're throwing out there, you know. <laughs> I guess the only reason I would see I would think that you would do, leave it the row 100 in West Shore Drive because we're a little closer with West Shore Drive. And you're probably we right. We still need New Hampshire to come on board. They're going to have to go through a, no, whole, a whole new cycle system, right. budget system. So, so leave your 75 where it is for all the things Michelle talked about. Put 100 in row. I mean, that's going to be a next year project. And West Shore Drive is going to cost us more than all of them together. You know what I mean? So yeah. put the extra money yeah. there is my thought. Yeah, and you know, and with the um, public works capital improvement that I was I was suggesting, you know. Well, are we in agreement on the other two first? Well, oh yeah, well it, it kind of all works together. That's why I was trying to, you know, if you've got that capital improvement, you know, if something goes awry on one project, big overages and stuff like that, that's, that's what that would be for, you know, for anything. So the idea, Tom, Kim, what he's saying is he's talking about the remainder of the 300,000. So 100 to Row, 200 to West Shore, and 300 for Public Works. So, so, so these are just indication amounts. By placing them, uh, placing numbers against these projects, they still will require us to come back with a warrant mm -hmm. to get approval at town, me right. town meeting for uh, to appropriate these monies. <laughs> Right. Is that uh, th correct? That's a question from Michelle, and I'm sorry I was talking to her. The way can you I, word these article? Can you word can these word articles so, so that they have to come back just... and get permission from the yes so from they, the yeah. from the selectmen or from the voters, Tom? From the voters. From the voters. I'm assuming the town would yeah. need to approve. So these. these articles would not be written as statutory reserves. They would just be um, capital improvements. And, so, and in order to draw from them, we would have to come back to a town meeting and get approval through a warrant of some kind for Correct. a project with a specific amount. That's great. I just I just think people would want to know if we're putting this money aside, generally what's the list of projects and you know, I, if we could, I'd actually put a priority on them based on, you know, just list them in priority order saying, this is what we intend to use the, to use these funds for and we'll be back to you once we've done the design, we've done the bidding and we're ready to ask for, for a specific uh, warrant amounts for various projects. So the last 200, Tom, are you are you on board with it just being, and David saying, a public works reserve account? Well, um, well, can it go into I, something? I, yeah. <laughs> go ahead, Kim. Go ahead, Kim. Um, well, okay. So if it goes into a public works, it can only be used for public works, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And public works is your roads and your transfer station. Does it have That's anything to do with rec and community centers? No. no. You have ARPA funds for that. I can use, use ARPA funds for that We can. You can if you can get the voter approval. And that's why I was saying oh. when I started talking about using our ARPA funds for roads. We, we've we got so much money so right we now that we're putting that aside for, the for this well, and, that's and why, that. Yeah, and Dave, the ARPA just, funds, I really think they could go towards something that we can say this is what it's for. And, and we had had conversations about paving, you know, giving the, giving the road commissioners more money with paving. And David thought putting it in this account was let's see them bring some projects before us. Let's them, see them spend down and do some of the projects. And then if they, you know, if they, they're all caught up and they're ready for the next one, then we have a special town meeting and ask the people to approve it. That, or, you know, the way I looked at it was, okay, right now, times are good. Money's rolling in. We have all this money we're trying to spend. And I just don't want to start dumping it in the department and say spend it because we have it. No, and, no. And say, no. you know, in, in a couple of years here, say next year we have a little bit extra money. Okay, we dump some more money into that account. And then in five years, we're lack on money. Here we go. This gets us, that yeah. bails us out of yeah. it. Do so we, I agree. Do we have yeah. any fund that we put money away for for future projects for the rec? They have. They Every have year? Like, <laughs> oh, I mean, 28,000, I think, in their I mean, capital a, I mean, a building fund. fund. Looking they're, general they're proposing going to, keep to going use back 20 to of rent. that towards their parking lot. Right. Um, yeah. Whatever they don't spend in their budget and whatever they make in revenues over what they budgeted in revenues goes back into their capital. Crash market. reported ahead on I-95 and at a quarter mile. Three right lanes are closed. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Be careful. Detour. Be careful. 
Um, is but any, so, is there any, oh, go ahead. What, what, what I was thinking on that, not to cut you off, but you know, we're, we're looking at right now, we got $13,000 we're putting aside right now for a, uh, um, a director. And I think when we get a director in, then we can start having that director put yeah. forward a plan that, okay, you know, and doing a, like a community center like you're talking about, we gotta have someone to run it first. You know, it would be nice to have not just a rec center, but a community center, then you can have- right, You don't like, have to call it up. Well, you could, I, I think well, you can have a kind of a combined effort. Well, that's effort. what I was thinking. So, you know, I just, I think it's a huge need. Yeah, but and, we, and we just gotta find someone to run it. And I, I will have, yeah. we're gonna have an executive session yeah. tonight, so. Yeah. Okay. All right. So All right. the other two hundred thousand, everybody's seems to be on the same page of a capital, um, a public works capital improvement reserve account, whatever Michelle fancy no, terms are. You can't call it a reserve. Just, you can just call it capital improvement, right? Public works. Yeah, because public works would that suggest it's it's road and infrastructure related? Road and transfer station. Road and transfer station is all we could use. So, so what you're proposing now is to just call it a capital reserve, which would have a broader. Uh, no, a pub of. public works capital improvement. Uh, why what, do we what have it to does, label what it does it public works? It opens. It leaves the door open so that if if something comes up where. Okay, say we're doing um, West Shore Drive. We're doing the culvert over there. And, you know, we, we've we stashed away 200,000 here and, and they start the project and they come into this huge, whoops, you know, this happened, yeah, yeah, another yeah. 100 grand. We can go into that account. We just, we gotta have a special town meeting um, and then we can go into that account. Um, the transfer station of our compactor blows up. You know, sure, that money's sure. there for that but only for those two departments. And, and, and it, but it doesn't limit you. So by leaving it kind of open like this, it gives, uh, gives you a little leeway in case there's a, a discrepancy somewhere that we have to take care of or whatever. It gives us a little leeway. And you, only those two departments, David? What yeah. were you thinking, Tom? What other? I, 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 I always like to keep things as, as uh, unrestricted as possible. And not knowing what um, the capital improvement committee is going to come up with and so on. I don't know why we would uh, earmark this for public works as opposed to just capital improvements. And it, 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 uh, it seems to me if it's in a capital improvement fund, it can certainly cover public works. But if I understand correctly, if it's public works, it can't cover uh, anything other than those two departments. That seems unnecessarily restrictive. Well, I mean, it's no. If that's the case, if you do another another capital capital reserve, there's no di no different than having a uh, uh, your designated surplus. It's it's no different. And and it's something too that we can we can actually we can have a draft the warrant article and the the capital improvement committee is due to come before the board on April sixth, which ironically is okay. the night, All which right. is ironically the night I'm hoping that you're going to sign this warrant or approve it as is, because it's gonna be, you'll have to be together next week and then the sixth will be it. Um, okay, all right, over. well that's so fine, we can. It'll be a matter of just removing those two words if you decide, but let's you know hear what they have to say and then you guys can give us more that, thoughts. That's fine, that's fine. All right. Okay, last item um, is fire. fire department wages. So, um, as you know uh, from the, um, you guys originally had talked about 7% across the board. Um, the fire department uh, did present to the Warren and Finance, and whether it's here, David, or at your meeting tonight, um, the chairman does want to share some thoughts with you on that. But um, on, fire, the, on, the last, in, in, on, on the increase, on the increase, yeah, on the on the fire department budget, yeah. Um, but let's go over the information that we have, and um, and then you can decide if you want to do that. The Fire Chief um, did send you guys a, um, a memo outlining his reasons that he didn't feel like the 7% um, was sufficient, and he sent you some other towns. Uh, you recall there were six, um, six or seven towns that were in that. Um, I think it's important to note kind of what those towns were. Uh, they weren't directly in our area, but they were kind of higher up in the towns um, in York County. So after you guys both saw that, or after you guys all saw that email from him, um, I think one or two of you asked us to take his original list. So in the original budget book was a worksheet, 
that had all the towns, that had probably 20 towns on there, as opposed to the seven in the, in the email you got from him last night. So Michelle has worked on this document that you have in front of us. Um, it's got the towns listed. This includes all of his original towns. It includes the towns that he had on the, the um, spreadsheet email from last night. And Michelle had also, remember, did some surveying, and she got additional towns. So this also has the populations of each town, which is something that Tom had asked for. So what she's done here is, is giving you three numbers, essentially. Uh, you can see the, the minimum, the maximum, and then the average of all three positions. You can see what 7% does. You can see what the $5 request of the fire department does. And you can see what uh, somewhere in the middle of $2.50 does. So currently for the um, fire EMT, we are paying $17 an hour. The minimum with all this average, minimum is $16.51. The average is $19.43 and the maximum is $22.75. So if you take that number and add 7% to it, then you're at $18.19. Uh, the average was $19.43. So you're still a little, little lower than the average. If you do a $2.50 increase, which is halfway, it's at $19.50, and that's above the average. The average was $19.43. So giving them $2.50. $19.50. How much see, was $19.50. Oh, yep, yep, yep. yep, just below it, yep. Or if you give them the $5 as requested, it's $22, so you're pretty much, you're going to go to almost to where your max is, where your highest town is. Right. Uh, the next one, the um, advanced EMT. Uh, we're paying currently $18 an hour. You can see the average is $20.81. The high end is $23.75. So if we do just 7%, that gets them at $19.26, which is almost average. $2.50 is $20.50, which is average. $5 puts them at the highest, so the max, so $23. And then the last one being the paramedic, uh, currently at $21. Uh, average of 23, the low was 21, average of 23.44, and a high of 26.52. Um, again, the 7% puts them at 22.47, so a dollar between the lowest and the average. 23.50 puts them at average, actually a few pennies above average, and the $5 um, puts them at the max. So um, these are the numbers that, that you guys requested that we put together for you, so you could get a better idea looking at population, and a lot more towns um, than the la latest data. And we did confirm also that the, um, the paramedic received a dollar increase um, in 1819. There were no increases in COVID in 20, and then in $2.21. Yeah. So. She got $4 altogether, right? So. So. That's what you have. The fire chief is also prepared and willing and uh, very anxious to come before you if you'd like next week. but. This is the um, information that you asked Michelle and I to put together. I know we said 7% across the board. Um, $5, you, I just feel is, you know, I don't know why we can't do like like 250 this year and then revisit again next year and, you know, try to get it up that way. I think I what know. we do is you, we make a recommendation. We don't want to make a recommendation what we're going to do next year until we do our new budgets. Right. We, we gotta look at the numbers we got in front of us. And what do you think, Tom? Um, I, you know, I just got this schedule and I was having a hard time, um, you know. Are um, you driving um, home right now? Yeah, 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 we're actually just came out of Richmond yeah. and George <laughs> Washington. So I apologize. Uh, actually, my, wife is, uh, <laughs> my wife is driving, thank God. Uh, yeah, you know. Hey, what do you think? Um, doing salary surveys which is what you've done uh paying making sure that we're paying all of our employees in the market and um it it seems that for some of the positions uh jennifer and uh, correct me if i'm wrong the seven percent seven percent sort of gets us there in, at the average for some of the positions that may not be the case and so um i would I would look at the positions and I would I would consider if we need to do a little bit more on certain positions to get them where they need to be, I would consider doing that. But I and I think this is just the kind of thing that we ought to 
incorporate into our compensation policy going forward so that uh, we know what our peer group is, we know where we want to be in that marketplace, our employees understand what we're doing, as opposed to it just being a number that doesn't have any basis. I'm not a fan of that. So and there, I mean, there's, there payment. Are, there's a lot of data here. I mean, the, the 7%, you're right, the 7% gets all three positions above the minimum. But to keep, yeah. but, but to get them in the average, you would need to do the two dollars and fifty cents. The two fifty would get them there. We'll get them right. You get them in the medium number, correct? The average, rather yeah. than yeah. rather yeah, than the average, being yeah. the lowest and not being the highest. The two fifty gets yeah. them exactly, huh, Michelle? Where they need to they be, need right to be down the them. middle. And these are with you know all of the the high end towns that you know that, that we were yeah. given. Okay. Well, probably well, I the guess last the last stuff that we got didn't really give all this information you know we only had some of the smaller towns yeah so Shell incorporated in the other yeah. towns per your instruction Tom. i i i think what i'm hearing is if we do the 250 we'll bring them all pretty much to the average is that right yes well that that seems reasonable i think uh, uh i i think that's a reasonable place for us to be and Quite frankly, when we talk about compensation policy in the future, that's generally what I would like to see happen. So um, I, I guess I'm in favor of doing that, the 250. And I th think that it's a, you know, it's very important that you do put this compensation policy together because one of the things that, that I think I showed David, and I, I might have emailed you guys, but, you know, when I looked at, when we looked at the original document, and, and Gorham was one of the conversations, you know, one of the um, towns that the fire chief referenced in his spreadsheet, and it was very well written out. I would never, I've never thought to include a, a, a town like Gorham when I'm researching for ours, but um, Michelle and I received an email today that the Gorham, city of Gorham, has a deputy town clerk position available, and what was the start and pay? 2547. 2547. We usually reach out to Alfred, your, you know, Sanford, um, Newfield, type of down. right? Yeah. So people we, I, from here will drive the Gorham. To, you know, yeah, Florida. absolutely. Um, yeah, we talked about that. One I mean, this, this right here, this this right here, yeah. I'm yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> The, I'm just saying that we all should be, Tom had a valid point, or that we all should be, and this is nothing on Rick, you know, I love him to death. We should all be looking at the same towns if we're right, doing comparisons. Yes. Well, I mean, he, it's a good idea. I think. And, and Tom's right because you know on some of the positions it brought it to where it needed to be mm -hmm. the seven percent and some of it didn't mm -hmm. but when you come in with a five dollars for everybody and it kind of puts us in a spot where when, when we're looking at the data here and it's saying well this person would be way more than it should be and this one would be where it should be um but adding the other towns in kind of brought it yeah, down but one level. yeah yeah and you know at the end of the day you know, I mean, they're all paying whatever. We'll These sure people are... Pay them. I mean, you know, what they're worth and yeah, stuff. Yeah, because it doesn't matter if they're working in Acton or if they're working in Portland, they still do the same job. And remember, yeah. Acton also has the program that we, we will um, pay for the um, training. So if they're, in, yeah. if they're an EMT good. and they want to become advanced, we'll pay for that schooling, correct? Uh, yeah, they have a contract they have to sign that they'll put in so many hours and... So they'll stay with us for a while after they right. take it. So there's some fringe benefits from. Yeah. But so I mean, we're paying for the education. Yeah. That's you know, continuing education is, a, I would think, a bonus. But like I was saying, I think the problem is, is for any department head to just come in and say every position should get a, a raise to, from top to bottom, that puts us all in a really bad spot. Saying, you know, it's, it's too broad at that point. Uh, by looking at the information we got here, uh, we see that yeah, uh, if we want to bring them where. They're at the medium, not the max. Not the minimum. Yeah. Not the minimum. Yeah, not, right in the middle where, no. where we should be, the 250 is where we want to be. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and I think we revisit it uh, as we consider this compensation policy. I think we also ought to need, we need to look at the peer group. It's fine that we use this one for now. I would suggest that we want to reconsider that and may not use all of those towns in the future. We ought to find the ones that are closest to us and the ones that we think we want that are that uh, we're most competitive with in terms of drawing employees and possibly losing employees the idea is to keep people well, keep I, them happy keep them here and you get all of the departments townwide to use those same towns right but you know to be fair yeah. like on the fire department 
a lot of these guys work for all these. I mean, they, they traveled all these places. Yeah, this is yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. in Cumberland yeah. County. I mean, yeah. they, they, they will drive between York and Cumberland well, County. Well, where did, people would. Where did um, <laughs> um, uh, I think he still works for us. So, um, no names. The well, last there's one. A, there's a guy that we hired. And he lives way up in... Port, yeah, he way up Porter or something like that. I mean, yeah, these guys travel, yeah, yeah, yeah. so they're traveling because of, of the money. Yeah, yep. And so I think there's by, other benefits in your personnel policy that contribute yeah. some to the you know. So the by using you know by this spreadsheet that I got sitting here in front of me, I mean that's covering the bases. And you, if yeah. you do an average on all them, I mean, if you start cherry picking your towns, well then, you know, then you're going to get the number you want by using them all. You know, you're gonna you, you get this. You get the, the that's what we need. That's fine. I, I, yeah. All right. So that I, so. I, I, I just I, I just don't know that if some of these towns are very large, and I know like Gorham was like four times our size. Yeah, but that, I it, just don't know that that makes sense for us to use. Maybe but, it does. But at the I end of the day, a fire an EMT firefighter in Poland is the same EMT that's going to work here in Acton. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it doesn't really matter what town you use; it's the average on the cost. It, the, probably the biggest difference is they're going to have more people on shift yeah. in Portland. Yeah. And, you know, the only thing we have to worry about is also is those, you know, their benefit packages and stuff are going to oh, compensate yeah. differently on, on the other side yeah. of it so it reflects. You're going to worry about that with all your positions yeah. across the board. So, all right. So, okay. our dear Michelle will go back to the budget numbers again with our fire department and she will make that adjustment and, um, Again, nothing final, you guys. The liaison, Kim, um, we'll have a conversation with the fire chief. I've been keeping him kind of, you know, in the loop of what your thoughts were, certainly not to blindside him and right. what direction you're going in, so we'll chat with him. Um, I think the, the fire chief really has to understand that what we're trying to do here is trying to be Yeah, and fair. looking at this spreadsheet, I don't see how he wouldn't. Yeah, because, I mean, uh, we uh, there's a lot of thought put in behind us. Absolutely. Thank you, Michelle, for that. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you so much any other um budget concerns before she drafts the warrant together so just so you know we're, we're expecting the uh, planning board is as having a workshop downstairs as we speak we're going to have those articles um friday morning because they're doing a final vote tomorrow night um michelle's still waiting for county i'm sure and a couple of other ones oh yeah county i mean county's not going on our on our warrant anyway we doesn't have to go on our warrant uh, i'm estimating what county's at but they haven't even drafted a budget right yet so. But if all goes well, if you don't have any, is there any other concerns with any department that you guys want to talk about or you're ready for her to put them all together in a warrant? I mean, I think we've covered everything. I, uh, transfer station's covered. Yep, Michelle increased where she needed yep. to. Roads is covered. Roads covered. Um, we, the tr uh, right now, the rec committee, uh, rec, the rec department rec is, is And we got the director covered. position, so that's bonus. Um, we've gone through the fire department. Uh, at this point paid yeah. off the truck paid, paid off, off yeah. the truck we great. Oh, uh, are we putting forward all of the social services and donation oh, yes. lines as requested I like to do the same thing we did last year on, on the lake ones well then that's let's make that a budget let's make that a um, agenda item okay. for discussion especially if that's the direction that, that what, be going what does that mean David do the same as you did last year Last year we pulled out, um, and we did have a discussion. Remember that discussion we had about that? Um, at no, it's before first, my time. Yeah, no, no, it was uh, during the first budget um, meeting. I don't oh. know if you were here or not, but I remember Kim was here for it. And what it was, and no, because you asked me. I think you, you were the one asked. Uh, no, you know, by the way, it might have been in a finance committee meeting where we had this discussion. I, I might be wrong. But what it was was uh, the question was why did we pull Great East Lake Association, Gila, or whatever it's Gilea. called, yep. Gilea, um, and Balch Lake, and it was one other. And with the. Balch Lake had a really good fund. Like yeah, we there was money that they. You know, um, versus some of the other ones that didn't, and didn't have as much. Then uh, Gilea, whatever it is, um, Great East Lake. They, um, we had an issue with. Um, Are we still having that issue? No, it's been. It's uh, the case is done. But at the time, at the time, right. absolutely, and, and it still could happen again. And um, there was some lawsuits and this and that, lawyers, and we felt that some of our money that we were putting forward could be being used against us. 
So, oh, I see. so we okay. felt that we they did have an active lawsuit, Tom, against the town of Acton, yeah. in, or not okay. against the town of Acton, against a property owner yeah. in a, a project. And and our code enforcement was involved, and it was kind our of a big, yeah, you know, our, our town attorney. So we felt that at the time, it, give to to them that year. It, it really was kind of not a good idea to contribute yeah. to something. So at the same time, we looked at it. We got your county soils, we got Awa. We got all these other ones that we're giving large amounts to that contribute to the same thing. And then, uh, matter of fact, I think it was uh, the finance committee. Um, one of the ladies said that she uh, she don't even know where her money goes. <laughs> she's part of the she's part of the association. So I I felt it was you know what would do what we did last year, take those two uh, those I think there's three. So uh, what can we put the list the full list together on your meeting next week and you yeah. can look at them all? Yeah. Um, yeah. We'll mark, okay. we'll mark which ones you pulled and which ones you didn't. Yeah. And everything else to me was fine. Yeah, I don't remember what thing was there any were there any new ones this year, Michelle? Um, no, just Balch and Great East requested money this year again. Um, Maine Public Radio, we didn't put them forward last year, but they did request it last year. Yeah, I don't. I don't know that either. Um, so we do, and there's is stuff in your budget book, I'm presuming, from all the social services, so you can read yes. over that. But um, we'll make it a March 30th yeah. agenda item since Mr. Tom will be back. Um, yeah. And I we think can, that's the only concern I had was yeah. just, just out there. Okay. okay. All right, so look at that, 456. It's like we planned this. All right. So we've got to talk for four more minutes. No, no, we don't. That's okay. Good. But thank you. <laughs> you got an hour break, Tom. Thank you. I'll need it. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Bye now. I'll delay it up. Bye bye. Okay. So I guess we'll uh, we'll close down the meeting and we'll be back at six.